pleasant good morning everyone this is your favorite radio host your only radio host and favorite girl of course Corrine Lafont broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on between the lines it's a beautiful day you know I always start my show with gratitude it's a beautiful day I'm hearing the birds in the back I think there are different types of words because I'm hearing different type of sounds. So they all can be speaking the same language, but somehow they understand each other. Hmm. So it's a beautiful day. I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad to be here with a beautiful woman. And we're talking about a topic today that I am so passionate about. Well, all the topics on my show I'm passionate about, it seems. But this one, because I'm on this journey, and I'm encouraging persons to be on this journey as well, to be awakened and conscious. I, I really am passionate about it. So I know Christina Buchemin. Is that the correct way to pronounce her name? Boschemin. Boschemin, yes, Boschemin. Boschemin, yes. Yes, Boschemin. So Christina is going to be sharing some stuff and I know she's going to be hitting some spots with me today. I just know it before even having the conversation with her. I know, I just know. So let me tell you a bit about Christina. Christina is an author, speaker, singer, songwriter, mother of two, wife and animal lover. And I can attest to that because she has an, a, <laughs> an assortment of musical instruments around her, especially the guitar, etc. You may see it hanging in the back of her. And her dog is right there next to her. So <laughs> she was worried about getting rid of the dog. And I said, no, leave everybody to do what they want to do. Before she left the business world to focus on let my legacy be love. Isn't that awesome? She spent her career as a business professional immersed in finances. You finances compared to love? Mm -mm. So yeah. she's... <laughs> Her career as a business professional immersed in finances with a focus on streamlining processes to promote organizational efficiency. She's an advocate of courage li lives and breeds her message of overcoming childhood hurts so as to live fully and purposefully and has an unfortunate allergy to most dark chocolate. Honey, I am joining you there. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already dark cho chocolate in complexion. And I have, a, I have a, a, a thing about chocolate. I used to have chocolate before growing up, a lot of it, chocolate, everything, everything, everything chocolate. But somehow I started to get migraines, I think, from it. So I stopped. Anyway. Yeah. I had, a, yeah, I had a similar experience with that. Yeah. I always loved it too. And suddenly, can't yeah. do it. Yeah, my body, my body mm. tells me what to consume in all different ways and form. People, things, food circumstances, habits, you know, that's what consumption means. And, um, and chocolate is one of them I can't no longer consume. It just told me stop it and I stopped. So welcome officially, yeah. Christina Boschemin. Is that, Bo tell me again. Bo yeah, Boschemin. Boschemin, Bo yes. Boschemin. Yes. To between the lines, officially welcoming you with your warm self. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity to talk to people about what I'm so passionate about. Of course, of course. And I love yes. your house. I love your house with the plants. And the, I just love Thank the you. feeling that I'm getting from it. We have, well, I have them. They're mostly mine. I've got like 45 plants. And I got to show you this one quick because this, <laughs> my daughter-in-law bought me this. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. You have you have actually upgraded. You know, you're not the cat lady, you're the plant lady. The plant lady. <laughs> yeah, I had to laugh when they gave it to me because I have plants all over the place. I think they put a beautiful warm vibration Ooh. into the house. And I have a green thumb. You know, some people can't yeah. keep them alive, but I yeah. just keep adding them and getting new ones and transplanting and that's yes, wonderful. they're everywhere. You have a good hand and you have yeah, a good heart. It. And so that works for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I grew up on a farm. I grew Ooh. up as uh, on the land. Yep. I grew up on the land. So I love having my fingers in the soil. And I love the way that plants smell and yes. the vibration they add to the house. Yes. Yeah, it's really yes. nice. Yes. 
Oh my God, I would love to live on a farm. I have always dreamt of that. You know, waking up early in the morning, although that might be kind of hard, but waking up early in the morning, going into, in, you know, taking up the eggs from the chicken, dealing with the horses, yeah. you know, cl- dealing with the pigs, you know, just, just, just doing that. Wake, I would be so, just talking about it, I'm so excited about living on a farm. You know, because I love well, every- natural food, you know, farm to table. So anything natural is, is what I love. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a dairy farm. So mm. it was cows, lots of cows, yeah. horses, wow. ducks, cats, many, many, many cats. I still love cats, dogs, <laughs> all kinds of creatures. Yeah. I actually was even one of those people that I didn't mind spiders. What? No, no, the spider thing. No, no, no. No spiders on the farm. There were so many of them. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) There were spiders on farms. (laughs) No no spiders on the farm. I, no, 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 no. That's one thing that's not going to (laughs) happen. That's too funny. funny. (laughs) No spiders on the farm. Okay, okay. No spiders. Okay. Everything. We got that. Yeah, no spiders, no snakes. Only, only the proper animals are supposed to be there. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about, let me remind myself here, tracing adult issues to childhood hoods. Now, Christina, there, let me tell you my personal story or part of it. Okay. And I know that persons, you know, I've been on this awakened journey. And like I've been telling persons, they might think this is repetitive and it is. Because repetition, you know, is, is the best way to learn. Um, yes. I, I can tell anyone that when you start on this awakened, conscious, spiritual journey, that it is an extremely painful one. And if you're, if you're not ready for something like this, don't even go there. But I'm not really saying don't go there in the sense I don't want you to go. I want people to go because let me tell you, the... The end, and there's no really end, but the experience brings you through such a beauty. In the end, whatever the end is, you know, you realize you're such a, a better person, stronger person, enlightened person. The things that would have bothered you before just don't shake you. You know, it, 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 is, it is something that I would not ever regret going through as much as it is painful and i'm still going through it because as we as we mentioned in the title tracing um adult issues to childhood hurts there are still things embedded in my subconscious that i am trying to figure out and this is what i need your help with and i know persons need help with because they're walking around you know christina and they don't realize that they're in pain they're in hurt they're they have habits they can't explain they're doing things, thinking things, acting out in ways, behaviors, and they don't know why. They just feel it's normal, but it is not if they really sit down and go within. And, and the only reason, the only way you could do that is when you become conscious, when you become awake and, and aware of yourself that, hey, I don't feel good about this. Your intuition may tell you something is wrong, but the fear of having to deal with it is what stops people. And, and like I say, it is such a beautiful journey. You feel a sense of peace, I think more than anything else, peace with yourself, you know, and, and it, it, it forces you, whether you want to or not, to let go of a lot of negative, toxic things in your life and people and circumstances. Some people may leave their job, they cut off their family, they, they divorce, you know, mm-hmm. cut off friends, who they talk about friends is a lot. So I'm putting that context to, to kind of get people who will be listening to this episode to understand the direction that we'll be going on and what we will be dealing with. And not that I want to control the direction, but I have to set the context so that when we start to talk, you may even lead me in a different direction based on the things that you say. So, so I want you to go back into your own personal journey you now after sharing mine. When did you start on this, whatever this is, if, if it is a spiritual journey that you can talk about 
and encourage persons to want to go back into their childhood to deal with the hurts? For me, it started in 2007 when my second husband told me he wanted a divorce. And at the time, like I was married to my first husband for 13 years. And then I had seven years in between. And I said, I'm trying to fix myself. You know, I was, I was on this journey to understand myself and understand other people more so that, you know, if somebody else came along that I would make a quote unquote better choice which I thought I did, you know, very different personality. But when we got into it, similar issues. So when he said he wanted a divorce, at first I was absolutely heartbroken because I was passionately in love with him. And, and I was brokenhearted and I was so disappointed in myself because I said I was the person who chose him to mm -hmm. twice. I did the same thing. And I remember standing in my kitchen, he had called me, my little bird had died that weekend and I was heartbroken and him saying, you know, I know how much you loved that silly little bird. <laughs> and there was something about that moment. I remember standing and looking out my kitchen window and saying, I need to start paying attention. There's a message here that I'm just not seeing. Mm -hmm. And from there, I started on this journey, kind of what you're saying, it was a lot of pain, and it was a lot of heartbreak. And, and people were being so kind to me and really helping me out. And when they would tell me things, I would write them on three by five cards, you know, like positive things. And I had them posted all over my house. I'm like, I'm going to do this differently. Mm -hmm. When I started to when I started to write the book, I got the idea for the book, Let My Legacy Be Loved, Tracing Adult Issues to Childhood Hurts. It was originally a very different book mm -hmm. because it was always my intention to help people avoid the pitfalls and mistakes I had made. And I wanted to use my own stories because I felt they were very relatable. But when I got into the story and my girlfriend was helping me with it and she asked me a question, she said to me, why? She goes, you know, I've known you for 10, 11 years, and I still don't understand why you married, I call him Gabrielle in the book, why you married Gabrielle when you must have seen these red flags. And I said to her, you know, I just wanted to be loved. I had been alone for so long. Mm -hmm. And she said, but why is it so important for you to feel loved? And I said, I think it goes back to when I was a kid because I never really felt like anybody loved me when I was a kid, mm -hmm. except for my uncle. And I saw him once, I saw him once a year. And she just looked at me and she goes, oh my gosh, you need to write about that. Mm -hmm. So I went back and that's when I started actually tracing it back to childhood hurts. And what I began to understand as I went along the way is all the things, I was very successful in business, mm -hmm. but all the things that held me back from having a successful personal relationship were the fact that about things that happened when I was a kid and the things that I believed about myself in my family and in relationship. Mm -hmm. And then I started to study because I wasn't even exactly sure what I was writing about. You know, when I first started doing, it, I was trying to find a common thread because they were all separate stories. And I sent them off to a friend of mine and she said, she goes, I think you're dealing with childhood trauma. I go, childhood trauma? Are you kidding me? I grew <laughs> up, I had the best childhood. I grew up on a farm. Mm -hmm. I had cows and horses yeah. and empty acres mm -hmm. around me. I, I was such a lucky kid. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it, got me, it got me thinking because my friend that was working with me kept saying that was so traumatic. It was so traumatic. And I said, no, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't great. But so I started to research. And it was then that I came across the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, which was originally conducted in the 1990s by some epidemiologists from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. They were looking for a link between obesity and adversity in childhood. They tested 77,000 people 
And when this test came back, it was a simple 10 question test, which is in the book. They were blown away by the results because across white collar and blue collar workers, what they found was they all had adversity in childhood, mm -hmm. the things that they had on the test. And mm -hmm. since then, and this is where it gets really important, and I'm hoping that helps you on your path and anybody else who's listening on their path, mm -hmm. is I started to do a lot of research around that idea. And I got interested in this one neuroscientist. His name is Dr. Bruce Perry. Mm -hmm. He was, last year, he was interviewed, Oprah Winfrey interviewed him on 60 Minutes. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how our brains develop when we're children. So we're in a house where there's a lot of chaos, there's inconsistency, there's violence, there's all, all things are empty. And we need all that space. We take in everything around us because it's our families that teach us language. They teach us our place in the family. Mm -hmm. They teach us social norms, right? Basically, they're teaching us how to be a human being on the planet. Mm -hmm. there, and during this time, our brains are slowly wiring in behavior patterns that we keep with us for the rest of our lives. And they're just reacting to the childhood that they came from. They learned patterns when they were a kid that were not really questioned. It was part of their family. Like for me, I just said, well, it's, you know, it's just how I grew up. I didn't have any trauma, I didn't mm -hmm. have, but I knew what I wanted to do differently with my own children. So going through all of this and looking at it, in the book I call it being open to discovery, mm -hmm. but really what it is, instead of looking at it as it's a dirge, it's like a horrible thing, I don't wanna go back there. It's sort of like looking at it with curiosity being open to what you might find, you know, I kind of liken it to growing up on a farm. I used to love to go and turn over stones in the field. You never knew what you were going to find. All kinds of interesting little bugs, <laughs> spiders, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, things that you might find under, under a stone, you know, and it's like, whoa, what is that? Mm -hmm. And if people can, and this is what I'm working with people on to try to, because so many people, they say, oh, I don't want to look at that. That was horrible. Mm -hmm. And yes, it was. But if you go back and you want to look at it with understanding and compassion, turn that story around to that poor little kid. She had this experience. You can suddenly become very compassionate about what happened, which brings compassion to you, a lot of self-forgiveness. And then to start to think about, you know, around the people that hurt you too, what happened to them, that mm -hmm. they may have done something like that. Yeah. And when we start kind of turning things around, and believe me, it's a process. It <laughs> took me time to come to all this and to come to that understanding. But on the other side of it all, I always say, I, I can't even imagine, it's sort of like, I always love that movie, A Christmas Carol, you know, where the Marley brothers come in and they're full of the chains and <laughs> dragging all the stuff along with them, when you suddenly don't have that anymore. Yeah. And like one of my big issues was always stage fright, because yeah. my mom told me that I was fat and unattractive, yeah. and that I couldn't sing. And oh, wow. singing was like, one of my favorite things to do. Wow. So I had wicked stage fright and my whole life I tried to overcome that stage fright and sitting in front of you today and being on a camera, you know, I have gotten comfortable with it where before I would always say, gosh, I'm so unattractive. I can't do this. Yes. So that's huge for me. And that's only been in the last few years. Wow. So, I mean, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can always change the way you think about it you know because it's about changing our perspective mm -hmm. like looking at it all with compassion and understanding and coming to that place with it honestly it, it just changes everything I, I so that's kind of my long-winded story no it's not long-winded I love it I heard a number of things and I hope I could remember all of them what what okay. I heard is you you were successful in business 
And the first thought that came to me when you said that is that there are a number of people who are doing well in their business, who are excelling, you know, climbing up the corporate ladder, but there's something missing and they know it. And I think that, mm -hmm. yes, they know it. They, they are very good otherwise. And I think what they do unconsciously or subconsciously is use that as a way to mask how they're really feeling. You know, they, they, they cover because that, that is the external. And we live in a world where everything is external gratification. You have the best mm -hmm. car, you have the best job, the title, the money, the house, you know, a lovely woman on the side of you, or, you know, if it's the other way, you're a lovely man. But when you're alone, in that quiet moment, that's when the shadows and the demons come at you, you know. Yes. And yes, that's when the shadows and the demons come at you, and that little voice, and that little voice is you, the little child inside of you, that's talking to you and, you and it's hard for you to deal with. So you, you consume with more work. What you do, you do more work. You, you, you look for more projects. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get yourself involved in other yeah. activities to cover, to cover, to cover with, as a way of running away from dealing with, with the childhood issues. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. Because so many times I question myself. I'll say, you know, I'll get a little thought coming in. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll think to myself, why am I having that thought? What is it? And, and what I've learned to do with that little thought, and this is new too, is just say, okay, God, how can I see this situation differently? Mm -hmm. What can I do to see it differently? Mm -hmm. And I have a friend and she just told me this a couple of weeks ago and I really loved it. She said to me when that little voice comes in, she started saying to herself, I know you, yeah. you don't have my best interest at heart. I know yeah. you. Yeah. And, and I thought to myself, whoa, that's a cool little tool because I've learned a lot of things over the years to kind of like another one that somebody had said to me once is I'm so bored with you go away. Mm -hmm. But I think that, I think that's where what's really important is that little voice is telling you something that needs to be healed. That's it's right. something that's coming up. It's mm -hmm. coming up and it's trying to get your attention to mm -hmm. say, you, this is something that you could work on. This is something that you could look at mm -hmm. to be a better person. We all want to be better people. And mm -hmm. why do we want to be better people? Because when we love ourselves, it extends out to everybody around us. That's and right. then everybody they touch, it extends out around there. You know, that love, love only goes out simply because that's just what it does. You can't, you, yeah. can't, you can't listen to me. I, you know, people ask me, I, I've been in groups and meetings and people say, you know, which, which one would, would you choose? You know, some people will say peace, love, um, humility. What I say love. I, once you have love, all the others fall into place. I'm like everything else Absolutely. behind love. There's nothing else than love because once you have love, humility comes. Once you have love, right. it will come. Once you have love, it, it, just, it is just the grounding, the foundation for everything. And you talk about that voice. That voice is really you, that inner child. Because within each one yeah. of us, there is a little child. We call it the intuition, your gut instinct. You feel it and you feel it before your mind kicks in. That voice, mm -hmm. that feeling, that wrenching in your internal, you, you feel it and it tells you something is wrong. And how you know? Because you look back and you say, I knew it. I knew it. Um, I, I felt something was wrong before your mind kicks in. And when the mind kicks in, it's really the ego trying to, trying to yes. keep you where you are because it will do anything mm -hmm. to survive. So the mind is going to realize, exactly. yes, the mind is going to realize, hold on, what? The little child is trying to tell you that feels wrong, don't do it. Hell no, you need to do it. <laughs> and it, it, it goes into analytical mode and try to rationalize <laughs> and tell you all sorts of things to talk you out of it as opposed to following that feeling 
My goodness. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, and it's like, and I, like I, what I've come to realize is that little voice. It is telling you what it is you need to heal because it is you. It is the essence of you. It's the essence of who you are. Mm -hmm. And it's just saying, Hey, 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 I need your attention. That's why these thoughts, you know how they repeat and repeat Mm -hmm. and repeat that sometimes it just drives you crazy. It might even wake you up at night because it needs to get your attention. Attention. There's something there you need to look at. Sometimes you you know, some people are not as animal. Yes, sometimes you hear it scream at you. You're like, oh my God, (laughs) it literally says, don't. (laughs) Right. Yeah, yeah. You literally hear it scream. Right. Yeah. Well, that little voice like, yeah, for me, that little voice always used to be saying, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You can't no. do this. You're not smart no. enough. You're not that's, pretty enough. No, that's not, not the voice. Enough. That's not, not the voice. The, ones that's te- the one that's yeah. telling you is, the, is, you know, is that is not your inner child. Your inner child will never tell you you're not good enough because it is there to, to, to it's you. It's you. It will never tell you. So anytime you're hearing those negative thoughts, that's that's the ego coming at you you know it's right it's that's what to, i'm calling it yeah. yeah yeah it's trying to it's, to trying to survive and keep you where you are and if you're not able to challenge mm-hmm. yourself and, and you know when we were talking off air and i was mentioning the the guitar and i said you know i was learning to play the guitar as a child my cousin was very very good at it he he was very talented creative you know he's passed on recently and as a child he, i said you know let me try this thing and once I did it and you know he said come I'll teach you what and I put my fingers to to play the instrument and I felt my my fingers having to stretch up you know that that part there to to get the string to play and I was like god my hands can't my fingers can't reach there it hurts it hurts and he's like yes it will hurt but it's just for a time you know you just need to practice and I, I really wasn't into the pain I wasn't into stretching myself to doing that and when I discussed it with you off air I it hit me in my adult life now that as a child I just wasn't prepared to to stretch myself you know to right. feel pain to feel pain anything that that gave me pain I would resist and for all you know you know this is what has transitioned into my adult life that I will stay in the comfortable even though even though it is something that may be good for me, I will stay in the comfortable. And, and this is something we need to recognize right. and, and assess. Hmm. I think that a, a number of years ago, a woman told me, she said, you know, this is all about learning to be as big as you are. Hmm. Do you really want to stay small or do you want to be as big as you are? And some people would say, oh, that's ego. And it's not, it's like God did not intend us to come here and, you know, be shriveled up and like, oh my gosh, he meant for us to come here and do our work. And we can't do our work if we feel like we're like this little thing and and we don't have the power to go out there and do what we're passionate about because we do. We Mm -hmm. absolutely do. Yeah. You know, you also mentioned that you were married more than once. So this is your, what is it? What, this is your what marriage? He's my, my third. This is your third. So third time's a child. Yes. So you have recognized by yes. the second, after your second husband asked for the divorce, that you were like, oh my God, you know, you're probably thinking something is wrong with you. You know, you're the common denominator. What is happening? Mm-hmm. And you recognize that you had to, you had to, some, there's a message, there's a lesson, and that is good. But some people don't. And, they, and, and you notice that in your first marriage, your second marriage, you are attracting the same type of person, re- repeating, repeating the same things. So you, you realize, no, something had to stop. I have to work on myself. I need to figure this thing out. No, some people don't do exactly. that. Some people don't do that, Christina. They are not recognizing. They are the common denominator. And they look to blame everybody else. It's you. It's that. It's a job. It's the sun didn't come out. So when the wind didn't blow in the right direction, you do everything else as opposed to <laughs> as opposed to accepting responsibility. Because why? Accepting responsibility means taking 
on accountability yourself, looking at you and saying, exactly. it's me. And people don't want to take responsibility. Well, here's the thing about that. Mm -hmm. In my book, what I do is I walk people through my experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like I start when my second marriage brought up and then I have all these stories. And after each story, there's a section at the bottom called discovery. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is an explanation of what I found by looking at my own story to analyze that story and say, okay, this is what I can take away from this mm -hmm. yes. and share it with other people. But through the process, and you're speaking to everything that I'm talking about right now, <laughs> through the process, I found a pearl, okay? And that pearl is, A, first you need awareness. You need to understand that there is something in your life that is not working, that you are saying, wait a second, I mean, how could I be, me, I'm a really nice person, how could I possibly be divorced twice, just to use my story? Yeah. So that's A. P. Personal responsibility, personal accountability, being, I'm the common denominator here. So if I'm the common denominator, what can I do differently? Mm -hmm. So once you've got that awareness and you've decided that you're willing to take personal responsibility and be accountable, you can start examining your story and understanding where did it start? You know, it, it all started somewhere for all of us. Mm -hmm. So after you've done your examination, now we come to A, applying it to your life, acting differently, being mm -hmm. more loving, being more forgiving, being more care, compassionate. Because, and by doing that, you come to R, you can rise above it. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, rising up is moving away from all that ego stuff and all that drama that we get embroiled in because well, when we're in drama, we don't have to think about being accountable, right? We don't. <laughs> so we do that and then we say, okay, now we've risen, up. we've risen above this. Why? So that we can love and we can, and the greatest legacy that anybody can leave their family is one of love. You know, when my kids were born, I immediately started squirreling away money for them so that they would have it. <laughs> and what I realized that the most important legacy was love. So love. it's a pearl. Yeah. Um, awareness personal responsibility, examination, acting and applying, rising above for love. It's yeah. pretty simple and it's pretty much everything that you're saying here, yeah. which is wonderful. I want, I want to go back. The, the third point I want to raise here is when you said, I lived on a farm. I mean, come on. I had horses, mm -hmm. cows, spiders, you know, <laughs> goats. <laughs> Snakes. Right? <laughs> I had all of that. I had the life of my dream. What do you mean mm -hmm. childhood trauma? What are you saying? No, this is the response that people have. Anybody looking back, but you mm -hmm. see what has happened, Christina? We have no other reference. It wasn't like you right. lived on a farm and then you went to the city for another part of your life for you to say, no, no. You know, when I lived on the farm, my mother didn't treat me right. When I was in the city, my mm -hmm. uncle treated me. You didn't have a comparison. You didn't, you, the only reference you have as a child is, right. being, is being at the mercy of your parents, whoever you were born into the circumstances. So you, you don't have anything to compare it with. This, this is what you know. Right. This is what formed you into who you are. So, so you are not obviously, I mean, mm -hmm. let's be honest. You're not obviously going to think, something was wrong in your childhood or your parents didn't know what they were doing or your caregivers. This is what they knew. And this is, this is the product of, of the circumstances. But as you, right. As you get older, as you age, as you get more exposure now, now you're having comparison because you go to school, you look at your other friends' lives, you're working with other people. You're seeing how they're behaving, reacting, where they're coming from, their background. Now you're having comparison. Now you're seeing yourself within, mm -hmm. within a, larger, um, a, a larger environment. As opposed to being a child, you're, you're, you're in a smaller space. Now that your environment is wide, your eyes are opening up. You are now becoming a little bit more exposed and aware you're starting to question, you know, you're starting to ask, you're starting to seek, you're, you're, 
there's a, that inner voice saying something isn't right. Why am I doing this? I'm not feeling good. So, so at the point, everybody, I don't care who is born into what. You could have been born into the richest home. Yep. I don't care. Everybody is born with childhood trauma. Everybody have childhood trauma, but you just don't realize it at the time. You just don't. Right. And I, it's, yeah, and it's yeah. as you get older, you start questioning, seeking, and something within you starts coming out. That inner voice is because it was dormant all those years. Now it is coming out and saying, okay, she's ready now, or he's ready now. I can now peep mm -hmm. out. I can now peep out and start saying, knock, knock, knock. I, I need to talk to you. Knock, knock, knock. Something, is, something isn't right. Let's start working on ourselves. Exactly. And I was talking with a really interesting man last week. He's an addictions counselor. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was telling me that his mom was an addict. And that's how he got into addictions counseling. And he said, but you know, growing up, and he said, and even till I was about 30, he mm -hmm. said, I just said, well, you know, that was just my life. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't, he goes, I didn't think at all that it affected me. Yes. But then he saw his brothers and sisters struggling with addiction. And that's very common, you know, through mm -hmm. families. That's what they saw. They mm -hmm. don't know any other way. No. They, they, they're like, well, I don't really want to be that way, but they do it anyway, yeah. because that's what they're that's comfortable what they with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So you don't have a reference. You don't have a reference. You know, and, and what just exactly. came to me, what just came to me, I remember, you know, watching Sesame Street with the, with the country mouse and the, and the city mouse, you know, and when the country mouse went into the city, he was like, what is this? And then when, right. when, the, when the city mouse came into the country, like, what the hell? How do you live? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, two different worlds. I mean, when, when, the, when the country mouse saw all these cars and trucks, he couldn't cross the road. It's too much noise. What is all of that? Right. Right, right. When the when the city yeah. mouse came into the country, it was like, my God, it's so quiet here. You don't don't you have people? Don't you? What is all? Aren't mean? you bored here? Are you bored? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So you you don't realize, and I I can't recall what whatever happened at the end of that story with the country and the city mouse, but I'm sure their perspective, their mind was now widened, open. Exactly. to something that they didn't know before you know and now exactly. they would have started questioning themselves but if you only live in the country and you live on a farm you don't know anything else this is what you were born to mm -hmm. so you can't and and you know another thing i want to point out christina is that when you become aware and this is significant here now when you become aware and you start to feel that pain you want to blame your parents and you do and you should you want to blame your parents because you're, you're thinking to yourself, why didn't they become aware of what they were doing? Why didn't they correct it? These are the questions that mm -hmm. you're saying. Why didn't they correct it? For heaven's sake, they hurt me. They abused me. They destroyed me. I'm in my 30s, 40s, 50s. Look at it. And I'm now realizing this. Yeah. My life has, you know, and, and it's good that you're recognizing it at that point and you're still alive to recognize it. But when you start to go through that pain, you're like, I don't like my parents. I, I, I hate my parents. This is what they did to me. How could they? They're supposed to love me. They're supposed to care for me. They're supposed to guide me. I didn't know. I was innocent at the time. And you're thinking to mm -hmm. yourself, why didn't they do something? Why didn't they become aware? Like how you became aware? Because some of these parents still behave the same way that they were then and they have gotten worse because mm -hmm. time has passed and so they have aged into into the behavior so it's like it's more ingrained in them and they, they're not going to change when you are changing and evolving they are not changing and evolving help me to understand that christina i believe well it goes back to the brain patterning right if you don't it's like a, a, a tire on the road and you keep running over it and the rock gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. So if you never considered doing anything differently, mm -hmm. 
you're just going to keep running down the same rut. Like, it, you know, you've heard the term getting caught in a rut. Yeah. This is what I think. And sometimes I think when people get older, you know, for so many years, it was like, well, you know, you can't change. People yeah. can't change. They're yeah. old. They're in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever. They can't change. Any one of us can change our mind at any second if yeah. it's important to us. Exactly. I don't. I don't understand why people don't change except the generational thing was you know your parent is king for the rest of their <laughs> lives that's sort of how my parents felt and again nothing against my parents you know yeah. and I the, the, I became very very um compassionate mm -hmm. for my parents through going through the process because I don't I mean I know what happened to my dad but mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to my mom and mm -hmm. so I was reacting to what happened to me she was reacting what happened to her and here's something else too when they were raising us mm -hmm. they weren't they weren't aware yet mm -hmm. there's scientific stuff that says like women start waking up in their later 30s most people their kids are already adolescent by the time they're in their late 30s. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's that piece of it too. They're kids. My husband always says it's children raising children. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that's a really good way to think of it for people to start thinking about having some compassion. They're children raising children. Yeah. And I, you know, because I always want to bring everything back to compassion, like compassion for ourselves, compassion yeah. for the people around us, because I believe that that's how things will change. And not to say that that you know, like it was okay, because you know what, it wasn't. It and wasn't that was okay. one of the things. Yeah. I, it was not okay. Mm -hmm. It was not okay. Mm -hmm. And when I went through my own process of looking at all this, because I. Had, it was all okay. You know, I could be forgiving. That's okay. You know, my parents were under stress. They have 10, 10 11, 11 kids. I had 10 brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. They were under so much stress all the time and so much pressure all the time. It was okay. But when I really went and in layer and by layer and looked at it, oh my gosh, I went through a period of time where I was really, really angry. And then I said, it's up to me to let go mm -hmm. of that anger. Mm -hmm. and 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 it's also up to me to feel hurt you know when when something is hurtful we need to admit that yeah. we're hurt you hurt me yeah. otherwise we're not living authentically and we can't be authentic with the people around us and it really is about being honest with them yeah. but it is harder I think for older people I do believe it's a generational thing mm -hmm. but I think the younger the the younger group like our group and younger it's mm -hmm they're more open mm -hmm. to change. I mean, of course there's people that aren't, but you know, mm -hmm. for the most part, I think more yeah. open than in the past. We can't, we can't force people to be awake. That is something that they have to do on their own. And we, right. sometimes it takes a crisis for people to be awake. Most of the times it's a crisis for you. It was your divorce, you know, your second divorce. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a crisis, something that jolts them you know, in, in, into just waking up, becoming conscious, seeking, you know? Um, right. I really hope, I mean, forgiveness, I'm here, there are so many things swirling around in my mind, forgiveness. And people think that when you forgive somebody, you're letting them off the hook. It is not for them, it's for you. now. It's for you to move mm -hmm. on. And you're not saying that what they did wasn't wrong. It was wrong. You're not letting them off the hook, but that's not really for you to do. That's for God to do. You have to do your part for right. you to be released and moved on and move on and yes compassion is part of forgiveness and you have to look at your parents or whoever did you wrong you know and have that compassion for them because at the time they they didn't know this is what they were brought into by their parents etc and they were not awake and to expect them to to be awake at this point in their life after being ingrained in that they're not they're not going anywhere but you know, you are on your own journey. And like a friend always tell me, and I would always go back to that. She said, you know, Corinne, you're on your own journey. Don't worry about anybody else. You, you can't, you can't, you know, you want other people to be on the journey, to take that awakened journey, conscious journey. But you can't force people. You are on your journey, focus on your journey. 
don't think or worry about anybody else. When their time come, if their time come, they will deal with that. You just work on you and, and focus on you. That's, that's all it is. And everything else is going to fall into place. And, you know, what, what spiritually just came to me is once you work on yourself on that spiritual journey, Christina, because of that light, you were mm -hmm. mentioning that light and love, it's going to expand. Love right. cannot be restricted. Right. Love is some, right. love okay. is expansive. It cannot stay within a box. Love will burst through anything. <laughs> it, it cannot be contained. So once you start working on exactly. self-worth and self-love and, and you radiate that energy and light, it is going to impact other people. Even the same people who have hurt you, they are going to start seeing a change in you a difference in you and hopefully by the grace of God that they would start learning and, and, and if they might even start seeing a, re a reaction. You might notice a difference in their responsiveness to you because of the, the position that you have taken on your own journey. Exactly. And I think too, when it comes to forgiveness, people get really hung up there. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you can separate the act from the person, it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And because I think that being unforgiving, you don't hurt them. You hurt yourself. It's just like carrying a grudge against somebody, which basically is unforgiveness, right? You're not forgiving them for something that happened and you're carrying this grudge around on your back. You know, you're like you're, you're going along and like, I have to keep this grudge with me. I'm carrying this with me. Oh yeah. Okay. But whose back is starting to hurt from carrying that? Not the <laughs> other person. It's, the same, it's yeah. the same thing with forgiveness. I yeah. mean, really, right? Yeah. If you think yeah. about it, it's not hurting them. It's hurting you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Christina, this is a significant topic and I know I've gone over the time. Lord of mercy. When will I stick to my 30 minutes? I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> when the topics are interesting, you know, <laughs> it's hard to stick to that. It has to stick to it. Christina, I want to hop across to your Stop. website. Let me see if I can grab a page here. Tell me your website. It's um, www.letmylegacybelove.com. Yes. Okay, I'm pulling up the page. Okay. Yeah, okay, got you. Let me see if I can share that here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, yeah thank so you. Let my legacy be love. Not money is good. Money is good, but it's good to always remember love because you're creating memories, eh? You're creating exactly. something that can live on and you and love is something that would always live on. Finances will stop and after you, a while. <laughs> exactly. And you're 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 creating loving generations, like healing yourself yes. is your greatest gift. Oh for my god. Generation. That because resonates. when you're radiating yeah, when you're radiating love around you, you're radiating it to all the people around you, they, everybody changes. Yeah. They can't help it. Yeah. Money can't solve that. I love that. I right. love that. I love that. I love that. You're healing yeah. generations. And this is what we need to heal the generation. Because what has right. been happening is that they're not healed and it keeps perpetuating. And I, 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 that came to me the other day when I said I'm working on myself and I said, God, please, you know, let the next generation, my children and my children's children be healed mm -hmm. because of, of this journey that I'm on. Just like how we pray and ask God to, you know, make sure our children are okay and, and stuff like that. And you leave the money and the house and the land and the stuff. Yeah. The same way how you pray for that is the same way how you should pray that it be healed. Because once there's healing, you know, anything else can happen after that. You can build. Right. Everything else can build on top of that because you are healed. Mm -hmm. I want to feature something. I'm sorry about that, um, Christina. I want to I want to focus on some things on your website. You have some really great okay. resources, so tell me about it. Um, say that again. You have some great resources. I remember on your on your website. So take me through. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. 
I have, I have a blog. It's a weekly blog. Um, I, I only send emails once a week. And each week I start talking about something else like last week, can curiosity change your life where I've really started, that's going to be a series where I really delve into the idea of uh, curiosity mm -hmm. in your life and how it can affect the way you're thinking about things. Mm -hmm. um, the best place to start is at the beginning that does talk about, you know, going back to your childhood and looking there and taking it forward and it's okay to do it. Mm -hmm. um, healing with the help of another. Like when I was going through my process, I was working with my girlfriend and some other friends where we would just sit down and talk about it. You know, in the past I had worked with counselors um, and they were, they were all wonderful, but I just really found more assistance working with my friends yes. um, because probably because I was more open. Yeah, probably yes. because I was more open on the yes. site. I'm just starting to put videos cause I'm, I've been revamping my site. Yes. Um, I do have that, the information on that. Yeah, see, they're not even there yet. We just changed that last week. Mm -hmm. We, the ACE, the information on the ACE study is there. I found that very, very helpful when I began to understand the research and how many people are involved in it and the neuroscientists and, you know, right now there's a lot of celebrity, celebrities who have started to get behind it because they're starting to understand how all these things are affecting our population, things that happened years ago that we're like, we're still dragging it with us. So I love that. I have a copy of the ACE test on there for people to download and they can take it themselves and they can start with a story because a lot of people don't know where to start. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I hadn't really thought about it either until I, well, I, I found the first story and then took the ACE test and it was like, whoa, okay, now I get it. So if you have a starting place for looking at your story, I found that very, very helpful. I love these um, questions that you have here because these are things to kind of see if they trigger anything in you. Do you struggle with intimate relationships? You feel alone in a crowd. You feel worthless or less worthy if you want to say that with your friends and family. You feel unattractive or undeserving. Are you prone to emotional outbursts? And do you drink too much? A lot of people use this to anesthetize the, the, the pain yes. that they're feeling. And same thing like I was talking about with the job and the career. Your career takes precedence mm -hmm. because you don't want to deal with the issue. You don't exactly. want to the issue. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't real most people don't realize that that's why they're no. doing it. It's just like I was talking about, you know, when you're immersed in all that drama and you have that drama, which work is a lot of drama. It's a lot of thinking. It's okay. a lot of trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think about yourself. You're thinking about your job. You're thinking about the outcome mm -hmm. of your day's work or your month's work or the project that you're working on. Mm -hmm. And you don't think about yourself. So mm -hmm. this is about taking some time and understanding that the most important, important person in your life is you. Is you. So yes, it is. And, and one thing I'm working on is dating myself. I haven't started yet. Lord have mercy. But I need to date <laughs> myself. Yes, take myself out to dinner. Take myself out to the movies. You know, just date mm -hmm. myself. Yes, sit down yeah. at the table alone and just talk to myself and date myself. Treat myself to these things take myself on a date. A lot of people can't do that. They're like, date yourself. What do you mean? Yes, you no, need to date yourself and see how uncomfortable well, you have to be. See how uncomfortable yeah. you feel doing that and why and, and, and feel those feelings welling up inside of you and deal with it. Even across the mm -hmm. dinner table, have a conversation with yourself and say, why am I feeling this way? Why am I uncomfortable sitting here in a restaurant without company and I'm eating and why am I uncomfortable doing this? Why, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? Right. Deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I actually still love to go to the movie by myself or out to dinner by myself once in a while. Cause you know, once you get comfortable with it, it's kind of freeing. It's very freeing. Yes. Actually, and that's the thing. You do it once, twice and you're like, Ooh, this is good. I don't need anybody to go to the movies with. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I don't need anybody. <laughs> you have a lovely video here. And of course your book, let my legacy be loved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Persons can get yes. it through PayPal. And is it also on Amazon? Yes, it is. It's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. too. 
it's at a discounted price on my website because I don't get the option of setting the price on, on Amazon. So right. mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted to spread the word mm -hmm. as much as I can myself because that's what I'm doing. I mean, that's just why I went through all this. This is why I'm doing, I was called to mm -hmm. do it. Yes. So yes. for me, that's what it's about. Yes. And I've seen some great testimonials here on, on what on the work you have been doing on your book, et cetera. And you have ready, set, live. I believe in that. Ready, yes. set, live. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. That was a cool project that I was, I was a selected author in there. There's, there's 26 other people or 25 other people. Mm -hmm. We each wrote a chapter yes. and that was my, that was my, um, my foray into really learning how to publish and what's involved with it. I worked with my, Marcy Shimoff and mm -hmm. Janet Bray Atwood. Mm -hmm. um, Marcy was involved with the chicken soup of the soul. Yes. And yeah. And Janet Bray is, does the passion test. Yes. And they were wonderful people to work with. It was a wonderful learning experience and such, it's such a good book too. There's so many great people. I, I got to know most of them through yeah. the process of doing all this. Co really good friends. Co-authoring yeah. is always one of the best ways to go. You leverage off of, you know, the other authors who have established more than you and you're part of a bigger, yeah. you're part of a bigger, of a bigger experience. You, oh. can't, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Co-authoring. Oh, absolutely. Co-authoring. Oh, absolutely. Because you also have all those people's people yes. to help you get your message out, which, right. which I found very, very, I found that very, very helpful. Leveraging. If people are just open to working together and collaborating, things will work exactly. well. And don't worry about yes. the ones who don't work with you. They're not meant to be in your life. So don't That's worry. That's how I feel. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't fret. Just let it go. Oh my yes. goodness, let my legacy be love, a story of discovery and transformation, tracing adult issues to childhood hoods. It's a start, Christina, it's a start, and all we wanna do is, is expose people to a start. Don't try to think that, exactly. you know, you have to jump in the deep end. Stay over by the little puddle area, if that's, if that's where you want to begin. Puddle, splish, splash, put your feet in, your toe in. And then eventually after you get comfortable dealing with that, then you can go over to the little baby section, the other section, you know, where you can stand in the water and feel like, you know, you're, you're okay, you're safe. Don't think that you need to plunge in the deep end with this. You can't. You have to take this, this journey as baby steps. And then... And that's you, such an... Yeah. That's such an excellent point because at one point, the title of this book was going to be baby steps to big change. Um, and I said, one of these days I got to use that for something because I like it because I think that it's important that people know this isn't something you just jump into and dive into. It's something that's like one little piece at a time, yeah. one little layer at a time to look at it and see what can I learn from this? What yeah. did I learn? How can I look at it differently? And from there, as you get into it more, then it's exciting. It's like, yes. wow, look yes. at this. My gosh, I didn't know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So That's thank you for making that point. Yes. And thank you for making sure that you write a book on that so that you can get back on my show and we can talk about baby steps to big change. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> I better get to work on it. <laughs> you please, 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 thank you. I, I will. I will. <laughs> I will, most definitely. Baby steps to big change. <laughs> So anybody listening to this, they would know it started here. You heard it right here. Right. Between the lines. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Christina, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I know we have gone over time. So it's, nice. my, it's my damn show. I could go over time if I want. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh and thank you so much i like i said i really appreciate the opportunity to spread my message yeah. however i can do that and it's people like you that that help me do that and yeah. i'm very very appreciative yes and i'm appreciative and i want to extend love to you and your family the dog and everybody over there and expect me to come on that farm thank i you. hope you still have the farm if you don't you will have to take me to a farm no spider a spider my brother <laughs> 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 fireless farm. Okay, fireless. I got it. Order. 
yes. I'm placing that order right please, now. Please, I'll put it out into the universe, a spiderless farm, so that you can start preparing. Okay. You can start preparing that there will be no spiders. Corinne is coming, no spiders. Thank you, no spiders, no snakes. Okay? And I'll be there. Well, that's perfect. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christina, for being on Between the Lines. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Corinne.